everybody. This is indeed the Michael K Show. We thank you for joining us on this Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. It's Jacob's birthday. It's Dave Rothenberg's birthday. So happy birthday to all of them and whoever's celebrating a birthday today. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Michael, Don, Peter with you. Don is in Raleigh, North Carolina, where tonight he's going to call the Ranger game. Peter is in sights unknown, but uh, he's here with us. And uh, I'm in the Yes Network studios in Stanford. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Wow. A lot of stuff going on. This is one of those days you need more than three and a half hours. Yeah, I volunteered for us to do seven. Um, Yeah. Was shot down. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to bed last night. You're seeing huge Giants uh, news. You're, you're waking up, and you're, and you're seeing scary Yankee news. Uh, there's a lot happening. Well, we'll start with the scary Yankee news. So, from the best that I could gather, I don't think there's an overt concern about Judge. Now, obviously, that could change the fact that they put a six foot seven inch 287 guy, 87 pound guy into an MRI tube. They don't do that for no reason, but they didn't find anything of his significance. Uh, he's supposed to be able to play over the weekend. If he doesn't, he has not had that many at bats. You do wonder about his availability for opening day, but again, the sense that I'm getting is they're not overly concerned with Judge. Now, We move on to Garrett Cole. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. Now, I don't know how bad it is, but I don't think it's good. So, pitching on opening day is out. They're going to have to come up with Mm. another opening day pitcher because he's he's just behind. And that's if just it's soreness. But, you know, they both had MRIs yesterday. So, the fact that we know what Aaron Judge's MRI said shows you that they know what Garrett Cole's MRI said. Uh -uh. I mean, that's all there is to it. So, I mean, yeah. when you're Garrett Cole and you get an MRI, the Yankee team physician is available at 4 in the morning. So it's not like they're still waiting for the results. They have the results. The fact that they have not told you what the results are is that they are going to other people. They have to be. They're having the highest people in the business, the best doctors in the business, look at this MRI of Garrett Cole's elbow. So I, I don't think it's great. I don't know how bad it is. But, you know, there are reports out today that the Yankees have re-engaged with the White Sox about Dylan Cease. Uh, I would not think that that is the be-all, end-all. As good as Cease is, he does have um, some warts in his game. He walks a lot of people. He throws hard. He's not Garrett Cole. And the thing that really makes it hurt for the Yankees, Don, Peter, there is no Garrett Cole to replace Garrett Cole with. No. No. No, not at all. And, and I, you're not really playing games. Like, you could say, well, maybe they're not saying that he needs something significant like Tommy John because they don't want to hurt their negotiations with Snell. It's the same agent. So, hey, believe me, if he ends up needing Tommy John, the world's going to find out about right. this. It's just a matter of trying, I guess, you know, get get all their ducks in a row here for whatever the announcement's going to turn out to be. But we know he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. You're going to need to replace him in the rotation, but to think you're going to go out and get anybody that's going to be comparable to the best pitcher in baseball, forget about it's, it. It's so, a huge blow, Don. You, you, you say, well, how significant it is at the end of the day will depend on, A, who they get to at least fill that spot, and who at the back end of the rotation can maybe give you more than you expect. Because, after all, it is 30 starts, right? 32. That's what we're looking at. 32, yep. 30, somewhere in that vicinity. And what's your record going to be in those 32 games? doesn't mean you're going to go in 32. didn't mean that when you had Cole, you were going to go 32 no, and they won 15 and 4. So, so, so what can you do? And how many games is it going to cost you? And other guys are going to have to step up. So it, it's a blow, but how huge a blow is going to depend on what their next move is going to be if it is the worst-case well, scenario. The fact that you can't replace Eric Cole tells you it's going to be a huge blow. So, I mean, you know, you've got to, until they make a deal or if they make a deal, and I, I still think that they're loath to, to go after Snell because, again, it's $110 cents on the dollar. So if you offer him $30 million, that's 60-something million dollars. I don't think they're going to go there. So then, then let's look at the next man up that they actually have in their system. Luke Weaver would be number one, but he's had a bad spring. So I don't think that he's number one. 
You've got Will Warren, who they like. You have Clayton Beater, who's pitched well. You have Luis Heel, who's pitched well. You have Chase Hampton as well. Those would be the guys. And Cody Poteet, somebody they signed during the uh, the offseason, which was celebrated by a couple of people who called me from outside the Yankee organization, said the Yankees have really done their homework because Poteet is ready to pop. Because he had Tommy John surgery, he's a good pitcher. He, but he's not Garrett Mouthful. Cole. So what I worry about, and you know, this this falls on into the lap of of, of of Aaron Boone. How does this not demoralize a team? This team is built to win a World Series. They went out and got they, Juan Soto to win a World Series. And now all of a sudden you're telling them Garrett Cole is out for X amount of whatever. Now, you, you, you cross your fingers, and, and you're hoping that it's not the entire season. But when you look at Garrett Cole, he is a picture of, of a rock. He's a picture of an ace. He doesn't miss starts. In his Yankee career, the four years he's pitched for the Yankees, I think he missed two starts, and that was because of COVID. And when he had a hamstring injury, he pitched through it. This guy's a rock. He, he's dependable. That's what makes him great. And you're not going to replace him. So, so who's starting opening day now? Is it Carlos Rodon? Is it going to be Marcus Stroman? I mean, whoever you start, even if they have a good year, they're not going to be Garrett Cole. So can the Yankees rebound from this? And you look at the, the plethora of talent that the Baltimore Orioles have on a team that won 101 games. Now, they've had their injuries, too, but they did make some additions. So you've got to ask yourself, the Yankees won 82 games last year. Mm-hmm. The Orioles won 101. Getting Soto and Verdugo and Stroman, did they make up 19 games? Probably not. But if you lose Cole, the ace of your staff, for any significant amount of time, all of a sudden you have to wonder how much of the 19 games did they make up? So I said this yesterday. If they've lost Cole for the whole season, I'm not saying that's the case. But I think well, it's wor- it's not good. I just don't know how bad it is. If they lose Cole for the whole season, they will struggle. No matter what deal they make, and even if they sign Blake Snell, they will struggle to make a wild card spot. Again, mm. well, again you, what, you said his record last year, but what were what were the Yankees? I'm not sure of that, but they were, he was 15 starts. and four. Right, so so they won at least you know more probably more than fifteen. They were probably outstanding right. in the thirty-two games. Um, so that's how you kind of look at it. But you can also look at it. Well, you should get much more out of Nestor Cortez than you got last you, year. You should get more out of Rodon than you got last year. Certainly, mm-hmm. both of those guys are healthy. That's going to be more wins just based out of that. Stroman, I think, if he pitches like he did in the first half of the season, listen, I'm not going to sit here and talk Yankee fans out of you know feeling panic and a sense of urgency. But I, I think that you can you can still find a way to be able to survive this, especially if you go out and get you know somebody like a cease. If you go out and you sign uh, Snell again, they're not Cole, but ultimately it could still end up being a very good rotation with the addition of a, a, a Soto with a Verdugo. So this team, Michael, even with losing Cole. There's other areas in which they still should be more than an 82-win team. Now, winning the division, very difficult, but I still think they can be a playoff team. And if you get some surprise performances, like we have seen from the Yankees in the past, not last year, but in the past, where the next man up has seemed to work for them, it doesn't mean your season is over. Well, well let's look at it rationally. And, I, and Peter, I think, brought this up yesterday. Well, They're going to have to slug. I mean, because they're not going to have the, the same pitching they thought they were going to have. So they're, they're going to have to slug. So you have to look at the, the, the team that the Yankees are running out there. They got absolutely no production whatsoever out of left field. It was a black hole. They, it was right. terrible. It was a minus war of the people they put out there. Aaron Hicks, Oswaldo Cabrera, obviously Joey Gallo, all of that. It was terrible. Now you've got Alex Verdugo, a guy you could pencil in for 35 doubles. He's in the last year of his contract, so mm-hmm. he's looking to put up big numbers. So your war in left field is going to go up. Is it going to go up three, four from zero? Yeah, maybe, maybe. And then Juan Soto. Juan Soto is an addition that you can't even, I don't know if it's possible to quantify. Is he going to have a five or a six war? I'm just worried about losing the war that ju- that Cole gives you. And this is all contingent, guys, on Judge being healthy. Again, I don't think there's an a overt concern about him, but anytime you put a six foot seven inch guy into an MRI tube, there's got to be a reason for it. They say they gave him an abdominal MRI. 
Now, remember yesterday, Aaron Boone said it's just normal spring training soreness. Well, it wasn't, because normal spring training soreness doesn't put you in an MRI tube. But Judd spoke today. He said it came back clean. I should be good to go this weekend. Now, if that's the case, then he'll be ready to go on the 28th in Houston against the Astros. Now, the big question is... Who's going to be the pitcher? Now, other areas that the Yankees have improved in, you're going to have a full season, God willing, of Anthony Rizzo. You're going to have a full season of Jose Trevino. You, 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 you have to have a better season than you had last year of Giancarlo Stanton. You have to. He hit 191. So all of those things, you put them together, they should be better than an 82-win season. And I think that with Cole starting 32, 33 games like he did last year, I think you could make a run at the Orioles. Now, I don't want to be Debbie Downer. I'm not sure that you can. And again, I know they're going to go out and they're going to try to get a pitcher. We'll see who that pitcher is. But I guarantee you this, they're not getting Garrett Cole back. Garrett Cole is not available on the market. That's why he's so special. And this is a guy who's been an absolute horse, never gets hurt, ever. So you you, you got to hope it's not Tommy John surgery. But again, the fact that we haven't heard about it means that they're checking with other people, getting second and third opinions from all the experts in the field, and then we'll find out exactly what it is. Again, I don't know how bad it is, but I'm not saying it's good. It's just not. Got to be honest, it's not. So, I mean, the Mets lose Kode Senga. Senga and the Yankees lose Garrett Cole. It's tough to lose pitchers. Pitchers are tough to replace, even th third starters, second starters. But an ace? Go around baseball and try to find me another Garrett Cole. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. He's one of a kind. And, I mean, talk about taking the legs out of a team. You have to wonder, in that room, is this team demoralized? Now, they might be, but it's up to yeah. Aaron Boone to rally them and say, hey, it can be done. And it can be done. It's, it just became a lot more difficult. Became a lot more difficult. Hey, Wait, well, listen. What you, one of you tell me the last time that losing a pitcher at the beginning of the season tanked a New York team season? I mean, yeah, but this this is like yeah. losing Dwight Gooden. In his, no, no, in I'm his joking. Prime. It happened yeah, last year. Yeah. It was a joke. Uh, it's called Edwin he, Diaz. Oh. His last season. It was he whole made, season. Rap. He made uh, 33 starts last year. The Yankees were 23 and 10 in his starts. I actually oh, thought it would be better than that. So. Oh, he, he rattled off a bunch at the end of the season where he won pretty much every, they, they won every game that he started. But, you know, it's 20, 23 and 10. So you might be looking for, you know, 23 wins. Now, his replacement, whoever it may be, should be able to get at least half of that. So now you got to look at where am I going to pick up a lot of pressure another on 10 then, victories. But, yeah, and, but there should be. Because he's supposed to be a very good pitcher that gave you nothing last yep. year. Uh, Cortez can bounce back. They should hit, as you outlined, much better than they did last year. So I think, and and they will replace him, Michael, I would think. And maybe it's not Snell or Montgomery, but they will replace him with someone. And we'll see if they can rally around him. And Michael, if you're so concerned about the blow, then I guess you have to be in on some of these pitchers just to let your room know, hey, we still are completely engaged. and we, we, We're going to do try to get the next best thing here. Um, is that something that they think about? Is Brian Cashman in, in, in that kind of a general manager to react to how the room is going to feel, or is it all just about the numbers of how he thinks he can replace these guys, or does he have to think about the mentality of an, uh, an all-or-nothing all season in which you might only have Juan Soto for one year? Can you afford to have that year start with Cole Hurt or possibly Cole not available all season long? Can you afford mentally to have your team have to endure that? Well, you know what? Deals, it's a great question, Don, because deals that a GM make or makes certainly sends a message to that room. I mean, the GMs that are active at the trade deadline and bring in reinforcements, that buoys the team. So if you just sit back and say, okay, Cody Poti or Will oh. Warren or Luis Heal is going to slide in and everybody's going to you know, slide up a slot, I don't know if that brings the same energy oh. I, I, again, but... You know, the last time that I heard that they, they connected with the, the Chicago White Sox um, about Dylan Cease, you know, the first thing the White Sox GM said was Spencer Jones. I mean, are, are they yeah. that desperate to give up their number well, one position so prospect? Now, we don't know what we're dealing with here. Because if he's only going to miss a handful of starts or maybe even a month, say, right. arbitrarily, then you, then you just say to the room, listen, guys, we can't throw this season away on a handful of starts that Cole's going to miss. Everybody's going to have to step it up. Because what you can't do and what Cashman's not going to do is break the bank to replace Cole and then have Cole come back. Right. You know, and then what do you do? 
Um, I don't think they're going to want to do that. Now, if he's done for the year, then you're going to have to do what you're going to have to do, figure it out. But, Michael, if it's if it's a month, how many starts would that end it up being? It could be four or five Six? at the most. Four or five? Yeah. You, can, you can't tell your room, guys, all right, five yes. games without Cole. Hey, look, let's Don, go out there I, and let's get I it done. I think, and this is just for me, it's not from anybody, if they, if they lose him just for a month, they'll have a party. They'll have a celebratory party wow. if all you this just is, said is a mouthful, month. Man. You just said a mouthful. That that would be the... You're saying right now, you believe that if we find out he's out a month, that would be good It'd news? It would be unbelievable news. The, the, the worst <laughs> fear is oh, he's man, out the whole year. Peter, do you, Peter, are you hearing what yeah. I like? That's... You know, for that's people, a low bar. That's, that's not nothing, man. Like, I'm thinking Yankee fans are hoping this is nothing. They, I think they've obviously, you know, opening day is not going to happen. They're living with that. Right. But, Peter, can you imagine this fan base? If, if a month is the best case scenario. Well, but if it's a month, they should be celebrating. The Yankee front office would celebrate. The, your biggest fear is if he's out the whole year. I mean, when they're doing MRIs right. on elbows, the first thing you think about is Tommy John surgery. So... And, you know, Tommy John surgery means he's out for the year. Now, if he misses a month, big deal. Big deal. As Don said, you absorb a month. It's not a big deal. You absorb it. It's five starts. Get hey, over it. And then with the hey, off listen, days in, in April, you can actually maneuver around that it's maybe four starts that he misses. But, you know, if, if it's more than that, then you really start to panic. Well, well, think about it. Like you said, it's four or five starts. I, I think it's ridiculous to always to make assumptions that any pitcher is going to be able to give you every start. Now, Cole has been a rock. But, you know, you kind of know the way pitchers are so fragile that, yeah, if we can get 32-33, we'll be thrilled. But there's probably going to be an occasion where a start's going to be missed or there's going to be an IL stint. And, and, and it just happens at the beginning of the season rather than it happening at the end of the season when you need the games and you know that you're out of it or, or you're trying to hold on. They can survive. I, I, if you fancy yourself as a championship team, you should be able to survive. Absolutely. Garrett Cole missing a handful of starts. And again, that's the way to root because you know he. Everybody's kind of admitting he, he he's he's not going to be ready for opening day. So if he's not going to be ready for opening day, you think he's going to be ready for the first home stand? So I mean, just extrapolate out. If they have to shut him down for a while, you got to. If they shut him down completely and say, okay, rested, then that becomes an issue of well, it takes another six weeks to build him up. Then I don't even want to go any deeper than that. They also want to make a decision quickly on exactly what's wrong with him. Because if he does, God well, forbid, need surgery, you got to do it now so he's available hey. next year. If you, if you, you wait a you... month or two months, then he's going to miss next year. Well, just look no further than what happened with DeGrom. Right. Right? DeGrom was having issues. They couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was. Like, you don't want that either. Hey, listen, nobody wants Tommy John. That's the worst case scenario. But you don't, you don't want to have to wait. Everything seems fine. Have him come back. Gets hurt again. The mystery illness. And then you find out that it's Tommy John. And now you tack on another year to what could have been over uh, much sooner if you had taken care of it right away. Like if you, if it, it, Whatever it is, find it. All right, find it and correct it. You don't want to have to be searching for this for the next couple of months, only to have it rear its ugly head again. All right, let's go remember to the they phone, caught the break with Tanaka. Like you wonder too. They remember they you braced for Tanaka, right? And it never happened. So you hope that it's not going to be the reverse here with Cole. Yeah, I mean, if it's something with the ligament, you you if it's a partial tear of the UCL, well, Tanaka never ever had surgery. He he was out about no. a month and a half, and mm -hmm. he came back, and that was at the beginning of his run. With the Yankees, so um, listen, uh, you, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm going to be as honest with you as I can. So again, I'll repeat: I don't think there's huge concern when it comes to Judge, but there is concern when it comes to Cole. Let's see what you're saying. Let's go to Caesar or Cesar in Huntington. Hey guys, what's up? Um, so yeah, so um, I want to touch base on uh, you know Garrett Cole is uh, he's a horse. But, uh, you know, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. Like, what are you guys doing, like, during the off season? that judge is, like, apparently, like, fatigued, like, doing spring training? Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, I, I know we get into the whole medical issue and, like, you know, but what are these guys doing? Like, Cole, I get it. You know, what are we going to do? We're going to throw a showman, you know, for opening day? I mean, we're going to need some, some sort of, like, you know, aggression, some sort of, like, oh, all right, let's rally the troops at the end of the day. And um, I just hope that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, our Aaron Boone is going to 
try to manage the uh, the pitching staff because it's going to be, you know, kind of a crapshoot. Well, I, I, I assure you, Cesar, he's going to manage the pitching staff. You know, his job is to manage what, what he has. He can't sit there and, you know, woe is me. No, he's going to have a moment of it. I think everybody involved with the A is going to have a moment of it, including Brian Cashman. But you got to get over it because, you know, the task at hand is you don't give up. You're not going to give up the season. You're just not. Right. But I think that the the way you look at the season is a lot different. They're going to have to piece it together. And the fact that it happened right at the start, I guess they have some time to pivot. And there are still people out there. But are you paying 110% tax on one of those people out there? Let's go to um, Angelo in Island Park. Angelo. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Uh, hey there. Yeah, I'm the guy that brought in the uh, the picture album uh, at the last party. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm upset. I'm upset with Judge. And judge, I'll uh, go on my English accent. It's a bit cheeky, don't you think? How so? It's a big, a big pain in the arse. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think Aaron Judge wants to play. So I'm not exactly sure where Angelo is going. Of, of course he wants to play. You know, from what you know, I've heard today, you know, he, he took so much extra BP during the offseason. Maybe that has caused this, whatever this is. But the MRI didn't show any. I've never heard of an MRI on an abdominal muscle, but that's what he had. And there's, there's some soreness there, but they, they don't, again, I'll tell you, what I'm hearing is they don't seem overly concerned about that. No, but, but this, doesn't this feel like something that's just going to be, I don't want to say a chronic issue, but something that's going to come up during the length of his contract? He's, he's north of 30 years old. They've got a huge investment in him, and I think they're not going to take any chances on any tweak, any problem that's going to arise because they've got that huge investment. He's, he's part of the firm now, right? He's going to be here for the next decade. They want to make sure that he lasts as long as possible. So don't you feel like they're going to be treating him a little bit differently than everybody else and make sh- and be overly precautious every time he feels anything, any fatigue, any issue whatsoever? Uh, I'm sure, but I guess, you know, the question is why does he feel fatigue in spring training? Why is there an issue in spring training? So just after he missed, you know, so much time last year, Simply because he ran into the wall, that wasn't anything his fault. I'm not saying that this is his fault either. But when you have muscle pulls or injuries like this or fatigue, you, you know, one of the callers just said, well, what do they do during their I don't know what they do. Uh, that's proprietary information. They're not telling me how they work out their guys. Right. But they, but they have certainly taken a look at this over and over and over again. I'm sure they've gone over it with a fine-tooth comb, comb about why the injuries are happening. I, I don't know. I, I don't have that information for you. Uh, let's go to Norris in Michigan. Norris. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Uh, big fan of the show. Thanks. So, about the cold situation, and I'm sure you guys know about the rumor of them wanting to get get back in on seats. Listen, the Yankees already, whether it comes to trading or um, getting a pitcher through free agency, the Yankee tax is a real thing. They're going to be charged more by every team, or the agents are going to ask for more money from the Yankees just simply because they're the Yankees, a historic franchise. So when you pair that with the fact that now they're desperate for a pitcher, and we know pitching is a hot commodity in the MLB, and you need it, and especially now that you're the Yankees, the price only goes higher. I mean, now I don't see a world where the White Sox don't ask for Spencer Jones in a Dylan Seas trade. You had the opportunity to get him before any of this happened, Corbin Byrne before the Orioles took him, maybe even a Shane Bieber. None of these guys are on the level of Cole, but I'll tell you one thing. There's sure things when you have a bunch of question marks in your rotation. You know, Don and Nestor coming off an injury. Corey Schmidt not really... But um, when you say... Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. A Norris, when you say they had a chance, the White Sox wanted Spencer Jones. You're giving up the number one position prospect in your organization for Dylan Cease. By the way, Dylan Cease walked 77 batters last year. He has a whip of 1.42. Last year was a year, but he had had Cy Young stuff. Well, the the, the previous year he finished second in Cy Young. So, yeah, he's a good pitcher. He's a good pitcher. I'm not sure he's that good of a pitcher that I'm giving up Spencer Jones. Maybe they'll get desperate. Maybe they know something that we don't know. So if they pull the trigger and they give up Spencer Jones, that tells you they know something. But I just, I can't see, when you look at Dylan Cease, he's not Garrett Cole. And no one is. I mean, you can say, well, Blake Snell is a Cy Young Award winner in the National League. Yeah, another guy doesn't give you innings. Another guy walks a truckload of people, throws an awful lot of pitches. 
So it's not Garrett Cole. Right. Again, well, I will tell you, right. there's no Garrett Cole out there. You can't go to Target and go to the Garrett Cole aisle. There's not. No. But the question is, can you get another ace? I don't think can so. Can you get somebody I, that's better than anybody else Snell in your I guess Snell is rotation? an ace. Are you willing to so pay $63 million for Snell? That's the question. No. Yeah. Well, the fans would. Oh, I'm, I know they would. But, <laughs> I will come back. A lot of stuff to talk about. We have Tino Martinez coming up in the 4 o'clock hour. Also, Greg Anthony with the Knicks playing a another game in the Garden against the 76ers. And we're waiting on official word on whether OG Ananobi is actually going to be back in the lineup. I think he's missed 19 games. It's Kayla Greco, Rosenberg, and you on Yes and on 9870 ESPN.